here guys and today we're talking about DJI FPV goggle antenna setups choosing your DJI goggle setup is kind of like choosing a character on the Streets of Rage game. If you were playing video games back in the 90s, you might remember Streets of Rage, and you would choose your character based on if you wanted the maximum power, the maximum mobility, or the best all-around combination of both. Now, unsurprisingly, my favorite character in that game was Axel, because he was the combination of both, and my choice for DJI goggles is kind of representative of that choice. The same kind of thing goes in here. But if you're on one of those other sides and you want maximum portability or maximum power, you may choose another goggle choice. Now I have all of the popular setups here and we're gonna go run through several tests in the field to figure out which one you should choose based on your needs. And I think you're actually gonna wanna pay attention to this one because the answer is not going to be the same for everyone. I could see each of the five options represented here being the best choice for an individual pilot based on their needs, their type of flying, their size craft flying that they do. Now, this spoiler alert is what I'm going to be going forward with. This is kind of what I'm calling the Johnny Five uh, FPV combo. This is the Axie HD patch antennas on the DJI front face plate. And I do have that Axie HD stubbies, but I'm actually going with the True RC stubbies on the top because they are just a tiny bit smaller. Performance between the two seems to be about the same. So it's not a performance choice, it's just a compactness choice. And you can see um, by putting this, it really does reduce the size and the footprint of your goggle setup so much. It's not quite as small as a Fat Shark, but it's getting there. Now the big elephant in the room, the most disappointing part is that I cannot use this BDI, um, DJI Digital Adapter, and this is the TBS Fusion module if I'm using this antenna setup because these Axie HD patch antennas go on the original stock front face plate so I can't have both mounted at the same time. And why did I choose this? I'm gonna tell you why going through. Let's get out to the field. First up, I'm gonna be going through all of the options. Um, now, the reason I came to this test, this is an unscientific test for range penetration performance. Now, I wanna say penetration performance prioritization over range because I'm not a long range pilot and there's other people out there that are gonna be giving you charts and graphs and long range data. Go check out RC Shim, he's done a really good job of that and i have over my career made a lot of tech recommendations to organizations and depending on the knowledge level of the user base those charts and graphs may be meaningful to some people so if you're a data analytics guy go check out his video for me though i just want to give you a rough comparison on how these perform relative to each other in a way that's easily digestible so what I did was, when I very first got the DJI goggles set up, I was using all stock antennas and I was flying in a place that I had the dropout, the DJI dropout where your bit rate drops all the way down to zero, the image cuts off and you have to disarm. So I went back to that same spot. I had my DVR so I knew exactly where the stock DJI antennas um, failed and I positioned myself pointing the exact same way, flying in my car to reduce that range, to induce a failure. And then I tried all of the goggle combinations individually one by one to see which one penetrated the best. Now these are the worst conditions for DJI. It's penetrating through about almost 100 feet of solid bush, brush, trees, tons of leaves, which we know DJI signal has trouble penetrating through. The first test we're gonna be doing is four true RC stubbies all the way around. Let's get to it. Next up, we have two stubbies with one Xair. This is the antenna combination I've been running the longest. This is my most common 
combination. It's a little bit of Omni, a little bit of patch. Okay, here's the third test. This is the Lumineer Axie HD system. The two Omnis, uh, traditional Axie shape uh, with a DJI compatibility screw on for the RPM SMA and these patches that fit directly on the front. So very low profile and clean. Let's see if it gets additional penetration to make it all the way around. Final round, dual X Airs. This basically makes you look like Doc Brown when he first answers the door for Marty back in 1955. Doc? Don't say a word. Doc. It's a little bit large, a little bit ungainly, but it should have the maximum amount of penetration. Let's see if it has the penetration needed to make it all the way around this giant bush. None of them made it all the way around, none of them. And that was on 700 milliwatts for all of these. So that comes to another point that I'm gonna talk about before we get into the testing. And that is you have to know the limitations of your system. There are certain scenarios where DJI performs way better than analog, but there are a lot of scenarios where analog perform way better than digital. And you have to know the difference. Um, for instance, when I went and flew around a movie theater, um, the front of that thing, there's a huge metal cage that kind of runs around it. Analog could barely fly there at all. It was totally, all of the reflections from that metal cage were just causing havoc on my analog signal, even pumped up to high wattage. DJI had not even a blip. It was perfect. So in those high reflective multipathing environments where analog would suffer, DJI excels. Conversely, on penetrating things like leaves, trees, um, any kind of foliage canopy, those are things that analog actually does fairly well uh, and digital does not. So you just have to be aware of how your system works that you are choosing to fly. So I will say this setup performs very similarly to what I had been running the longest before. The longest I had been running before was two True RC stubbies on one side, one True RC X Air on the other side with the Digi adapter. That is somewhat compact, but not completely compact. The issue with that was you still did have this big antenna flying off and but just to know the performance of those two setups and this was virtually identical the pros to having that setup was that i could still run this bdi digital adapter so if i was flying analog a lot i would be going with this choice so my choice really because performance of those two options are so similar is going to be this setup. Why? Because I'm hardly flying analog at all these days. Much, much less than I anticipated that I would. I anticipated I'd still be flying analog 30 to 40%, but it's like less than 5%. I just don't even want to try it. I reviewed the Diatone Roma the other day, and it's an amazing quad. It flies great, premium parts, excellent analog camera, one of the best I've ever flown. And it was just, I can't see anything. Once you've gotten used to flying this for several hundred hours, flying an analog setup just looks horrible. I don't have the confidence to freestyle the way I want to freestyle. I don't have the confidence to race the way I want to race. Um, it's just not that enjoyable. So what I've been doing is carrying around this set of beta FPV box goggles with me when I need to review or fly something analog. This is not an ideal situation. I've actually ordered another one of the analog adapters that's gonna go on the side here, and then I'll go back to my Fusion module. But while that was shipping to me, I just busted out the box goggles because it's so infrequently. This is actually a pretty decent pair of like $40, $50 budget goggles. It has a DVR, it has diversity, 
it has auto search functions and the image is actually really good so not really a ton of compromises by having to use this but yeah before i would always be using dji goggles for everything and so i actually momentarily switched and that's because of the frequency of analog to digital packs i've been putting in if i did actually fly 30 to 40 percent digital i would stay with that bdi digital adapter i would stay with one true rc mx air on one side the opposite side and then two true rc stubbies on the other side performance is pretty much the same the best performance though for penetration was dual x airs it really is dual x airs get me just a little bit but it wasn't significant enough for me to run that, I might keep, I'll probably will keep those around in case there isn't a situation where I do long range. Now, if you're a long range pilot and that distance and penetration means a lot to you, then dual X airs is absolutely the best performing out of all of them. Now, the difference in penetration in this set test scenario I conceived really wasn't huge. It was like maybe less than 10% greater. So this, really offers you a lot of bang for your buck i'll put the links to this johnny five combo or you can save yourself five bucks and just get the axi hd all the way around combo these have been so popular they're out of stock constantly so if i'm releasing this hopefully they're in stock links in the description below get them quick because they're going to go back out of stock very quickly what do you think in the comments guys how far have you been taking your dji goggles um i really like that there's such a solid group of dji antenna options available now finally it seems like it took a while and um it really just depends if you are just somebody that flies close to yourself and you want to be able to run and gun and fly often four true rc stubbies is a great option and it performs really well if you're on a budget and you just don't fly long range at all or you don't need that penetration the stock antennas are perfectly good better than a lot of your introductory antennas on the analog side so they really do perform well if you just want something to be a good all-arounder this is the option and if you want maximum penetration go with that now for carrying my goggles around i designed this little printed holder it has a handle that goes on with just any kind of lipo strap and so the way that it works is these just sit in here like this and there's a little hole right here that you put this strap in and you can carry it like that the nice thing is the lenses are always facing down even if you set them like that you don't have to worry about sun getting in there and damaging your lenses but you can throw this in the back seat or the front seat of a car without having to completely load it up to your bag if you're in a rush it fit fine with the digi adapter as well and the nice thing about this is that if you do have those x airs mounted it fits totally fine with those you don't have to take them off so i liked that i'll have the link for this file available on thingiverse if you want to print one yourself what goggle antenna choice have you made for your dji goggles comment below tell me what you're using and tell me what experiences you have also please go in the comments and tell me what percentage of digital to analog packs are you flying these days and if you found this information helpful or at least interesting please give me a like that will help this channel grow thanks guys